This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. And thank you for joining us here at Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is co-host Richard Fields and friend of the show, John Cameron. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Richard, um, I cannot pronounce her her name, as my German teacher in high school told me, you do not have a tongue for languages. So how do you pronounce that woman's name who was arrested? I'm just going to take a wild stab at it. I think it's Ghislaine Maxwell. Maxwell I have, but I think it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can just refer to her as G. Maxwell, the former pimp and procurer and partner for uh, um, a very bad man. That. Yeah, apparently her house she was staying in, she, she bought it under a name of G. Max. She was very sophisticated in trying to hide, apparently. Oh, okay. So, the, so there was she was in hiding that. Yeah, they they arrested her in New Hampshire. She had bought a 158 acre estate for a million dollars cash, and uh, and was and was holed up there, hoping nobody could find her. I don't know what the whole deal was. Apparently, she didn't figure anybody could find her because the whole G Max and a hundred thousand a million dollars in cash was going to keep her hidden. But apparently, well, yeah, I, I know that there were there was, uh, you know, airplane, you know, government airplanes and, uh, you know, the whole you know SWAT team kind of approach used to uh, bring her, you know, to arrest her. I, I do. I did you know read that somewhere. Uh, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Ghislaine Maxwell was the daughter of a, a very uh, uh, f uh, at one time famous uh, so-called billionaire, uh, Robert Maxwell. Robert Maxwell was a guy that uh, escaped from uh, he was a Jewish guy that escaped from uh, the Nazis during World War II and intelligence and from there went on to parlay that uh, into uh, a, uh, a media career where he owned and operated uh, tabloid newspapers in Britain and elsewhere. And he used leverage to the max and he was about to go bankrupt. In fact, he was uh, on the verge of bankruptcy when he uh, was found floating off the uh, side of his yacht in an apparent suicide, uh, oh, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago. So that, that's his daughter. So she has has an interesting pedigree, to say the least. Yeah, this oh, is a thing what, what is a sordid tale of disgusting nature. I don't I don't even know how to talk about this whole subject without well, a family friendly man. Yeah, she was the woman who she was the woman who helped Jeffrey Epstein uh, procure young women, uh, mostly poor young women who were looking to make, uh, you know, make some quick dollars by uh, in the trade, so to speak. And uh, he used those women, not only for his own gratification, but, but also to create essentially a honeypot uh, uh, entrapment scheme to entrap many of the world's uh, wealthiest and most prominent politicians. Bill Clinton uh, was uh, a, guest, a frequent guest of his at uh, his uh, island getaway, uh, as was uh, Donald Trump was an acquaintance of his. We don't know whether he went to the island or not. I'm not sure. Uh, and, and many others. I mean, this is a guy, uh, Prince Andrew, I think it was, one of the, one of the British royalty. Uh, this is a guy who was able to uh, presumably use uh, extortion to uh, milk millionaires for or billionaires for for millions and and uh, you know he's supposedly a hedge fund manager but it really was just a very sophisticated and uh and uh, sorted uh extortion racket and he of course was uh, eventually uh jailed and committed suicide in uh, supposedly committed suicide in uh, a high highly secure uh manhattan jail now the question is whether or not uh, his uh, mistress, who probably or not mistress, procurer, whatever she was, whether she uh, is, who, who is allegedly ready to tell all, to uh, mm -hmm. spill the beans to the FBI and, and obviously, or presumably knows almost, if not more than what uh, Epstein knows about his victims and, uh, and uh, compatriots, mm -hmm. uh, will she also uh, commit suicide conveniently? Uh, that's that's the question that I would raise. I, I, I don't know that what's wrong right with my map. My, my, uh, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, I hear you fine. Yeah, I, I, I'm hearing a little echo. but uh, So I I would, yeah, Epstein was, was particularly um, 
which is weird to me why why he lasted so long. He was very vocal about saying that the modern mores of the age of consent for women were wrong. And throughout history, women were married at age 13 and 14. And and uh, what he, he was pretty vocal about, you know, saying that he had a penchant for very young women and there was nothing wrong with it. And I guess if you have enough money and you, you uh, give enough... Uh, political donations to, to people, then, then you can get away with that. That's what I, I find abhorrent. You know, I mean, historically, he's probably correct, but, you know, historically, I think some of our ancestors killed and ate people, too, probably, and we don't do that anymore. So um, that bothers me. And, and the whole political mess, you know, the, the idea that there is, there is an untouchable class and, and uh, you know, anytime they get threatened, they they change the law, ignore the law, or, or the chief witness disappears. It's kind of scary, but I think we're, we're all just kind of getting cynical about it and accepting it at this point. So, yeah. yeah, well, at this point, I think the best we can hope for is that as many of these people get exposed and taken down as possible, and we can actually kind of start to breathe easier at night. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the hope I hope for, at least. If there's any kind of bright light in this whole thing, it would be that, that we can actually finally kind of start to unravel this whatever the hell it actually ends up being. So let's talk about breezing easier. The U.S. Navy has dispatched two aircraft carriers to the South China Sea. And on top of that, I read an article that uh, India was starting to build a Navy to match China, to, to keep pace with China in that in that region. So this is a, uh, it's a shall we say, a tinderbox growing over there because China and India are already at each other's throats on some borders, on a remote border. In India and China, there was a essentially a caveman style battle the other a uh, few weeks ago. Richard, what do you think about all this? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, China, you know, the the China India border conflict up high in the Himalayas, notwithstanding, uh, China and the United States had I don't care what anybody said had a mutually beneficial trading arrangement. We uh, sent them uh, counterfeit dollars; they sent us goods and services, goods primarily. Uh, that worked well for us, and it worked well for them. Uh, they are, are and probably continue to be the largest holder of dollars overseas, that is, the largest holder of treasury debt uh, of any country in the world. Uh, we had a sweet deal, and Trump went in there like a, a, a bull in a china shop and destroyed the whole thing. So not only have we destroyed the economic relationship that benefited both China and the United States, we have benefit or we have destroyed the uh, that any any semblance of trust between the two countries, we're uh, jailing uh, top executives of uh, some of the, uh, some of their their most important uh, technological technology companies, uh, and uh, we're blaming you know we're making uh, veiled references that they're, they're the uh, the source and the and the uh, to be you know should be blamed politically for uh, a disease that uh, allegedly originated in 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 China, uh, the. And the disease, the, the virus, whether uh, no matter how, whether it's as serious as, as the uh, medical establishment would have you believe, or or not, it has most probably eighty percent of the population very very fearful, and it has uh, shut down the economy. The politicians have done that, not not the disease, but the fact is the uh, the the economy has essentially been shut down. We're all under house arrest, and that makes the Trump re-election chances. He was running essentially on a on a booming economy, and uh, he's not running on that anymore. Now he has nothing essentially to run on, other than uh, appealing to uh, the ultra right, appealing uh, appealing to you know making cultural war appeals. That's what he did in South Dakota and Mountain Rushmore in his speech recently. That's what he did in Tulsa. He's got nothing to run on, other than the fears of. Uh, of uh, Southern white folks that uh, the minorities are gonna take over, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So the only thing he can do right now to pull the whole thing out is a massive diversion. And I'm wondering <coughs> if uh, setting us up for a war with China is a, gonna be a wag the dog war. And I would not put it past Trump for a New York second that that's what he's up to. I'll, I'll throw out a, a different version of events here since since we are libertarians and we never agree on anything other than, you know, less government and more freedom. Um, and, and, and the good scotch is, is good for medicinal purposes in, in moderation. 
but moderation in all things, even moderation. So um, I think that that the border incident you know, with India and their uh, India or China's um, uh, aggressive, you know, territorial uh, stands in the South China Sea, you know, creating artificial island, putting military bases in there, there um, is is um, a um, a distraction for their populace that that is getting you know pretty tired of living in basically a totalitarian police state, and and also a distraction from the COVID thing. You know, there's still an awful lot of people. I don't think we're ever going to find out for for something that's basically cost the 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 world what ten trillion dollars or whatever it is plus. Oh man, that's just our 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 deficit increase. We know absolutely nothing, no hard facts about uh, about this so-called COVID thing, um, and so I don't think we'll ever get to the bottom of it. But but there's a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors and and slick obfuscation going on on all sides. And and I don't know, uh, you know, you can point at Trump and saying he's an idiot and he wants to start a war, and you could point at China, but I don't I don't think we're ever really going to find out what's actually going on. And other than um, I'm hoping that one day people will realize that that uh, that people in government do bad things and and people left to their own devices pretty much do good things and and uh, lean a little more libertarian and give these clowns on on all sides in all countries less power because, um, you know, they certainly have. I don't I, you know, I can't for the life of me think of one. Um, horrible thing that's made the news for more than a day that Walmart did to its customers or uh, Apple did. But everything bad we read about is, is you know, I think governments are pretty much all the same. And uh, and who knows? You know, who knows? Yeah, I mean, I would agree. Government is pretty much all the same. We talk about uh, China being a totalitarian country, and obviously it is. They uh, uh, politically don't tolerate hardly any dissent whatsoever. They're going back on their word to Hong Kongers that they can have their own political autonomy. And they're saying now that they will arrest anybody that speaks out of line. And I'm talking about speech, not mm. anything else. They're just saying, if you are, if you are, if you don't, if, if you don't, if you don't support the regime, uh, 100%, we will destroy you and imprison you and, and disappear you. Well, I think we're, we're getting, we might see the same thing. We just talked about Epstein's former procurer. You know, I think that, that that goes on on here a little more obviously. That's the parallel I was going to make. Uh, we, you know, that they, uh, you know, they, uh, China, uh, obvious, very obvious in their uh, their uh, putting down the, the Hong Kong population. Very obvious in the way that they uh, uh, tell the Uyghurs, the uh, Muslim population in in Western China, that they have to uh, kowtow to the communist faith rather than the uh, Muslim faith. And uh, you know, as long as people in in China. Keep their mouth shut on politics; they prosper. I've been to China on numerous occasions, and it's a very, uh, up until recently anyway, was a very prosperous country. It was a very capitalistic country economically. Uh, keep your keep your head down, keep your mouth shut, uh, go out and make money, no problem. In this country, uh, we have a thing called political correctness, where uh, the uh, the uh, established universities, the established uh, media, have a certain a set of things that you have to agree with. You have to agree with global warming. You have to agree with, uh, uh, you know, a number of other uh, scientific or not so scientific uh, means. And if you don't, uh, you are essentially uh, censored, not listened to, not published by the New York Times. If you are an Austrian economist, you're not going to get published like uh, uh, a liberal a liberal economist in the New York Times. Same way with the Washington Post, same way with the TV I networks. Think, We're I, breaking I, through I, a little bit. We're breaking through a little bit on the internet, but now they're talking about getting rid of Section 230, which would make the internet a place where political correctness is uh, enforced uh, de facto by, by the government. Well, it's already been uh, enforced uh, unofficially on on all these social media platforms. You know that they're they're calling it hate speech if it comes from what we, we used to call the right, and and uh, you know the same kind of hate speech from the left is perfectly acceptable. Um, 
you know, so I, I I'm, uh, may you live in interesting times. We do. Um, the, the other thing, um, I just, the, the thought that I want to pursue just went right out of my head. It happens sometimes. Uh, well, short yeah, I think we moved from political correctness actually to cancel culture, right? You're not even allowed to have a disagreement of thought or you can get fired from your job, ran out of town. We, we've watched this kind of happen, right? It's strange. At the same time, we create all these micro laws to manage everyday lives. And then, but if you call the police on the wrong person, you get fired for, you know, for the same reason where two months ago you would have been perfectly fine doing it. And we've just kind of created this bizarre world where say, see something, say something, but don't say the wrong thing about the wrong thing seen because then you'll get your whole life canceled. And it's, we've created a strange world where we're all living in fear, not just fear of a virus, not just fear of the government boot, but quite literally fear of our neighbor. And it's, it's a disastrous thing for our economy and our culture long-term. Well, yeah, we, we have a Karen culture where Karen will call the regulators, call the cops, call, uh, man, you know, demand to speak to management on the slightest uh, uh, insult or dismissal or uh, slight, whatever it might be. Yeah, and we've trained Karens to do that. But also, if she calls it on the wrong person doing the wrong thing, like, you know, you call the cops on the guy painting Black Lives Matter on his own house, which I don't know how you don't know who your next door neighbor is, but that's a whole nother question. And and now she now she gets her whole life destroyed. Her husband got fired because she called the cops on the guy writing Black Lives Matter on his own house. Now she shouldn't be calling the cops on someone writing Black Lives Matter on his own house, but she also shouldn't have her whole life ruined because she did. Well, her husband, who was not implicit, not uh, not not involved in it, shouldn't get fired. I don't know <laughs> the case you're talking about, but come on, guilty yeah, association well, yeah, was is really, supposedly you know, not supposed to happen here. We make we make light of the Constitution sometimes as as you know libertarians, but that the First Amendment's a pretty cool thing, and and it's now apparently only in force if you're uh, if you're in the favor of the the people with control of um, social media. So uh, and I think that might that might lead to another. I don't want to try to run the show, but maybe it's time to talk about that. I don't know. Well, we've got next, we're actually going to hit back China for a second. Anonymous has told us to uh, remove the TikTok app from our phones because it's Chinese spyware. I have to admit, I know nothing about TikTok. I've never used TikTok. I don't uh, know how it's used, what it's used for. So I will plead complete ignorance, certainly complete, complete, complete ignorance as to whether or not it's got Chinese spyware in it. Although I suspect no, that uh, pretty much any. It no. probably has somebody's spyware in it, whether it's yeah. China or the U.S. or somebody else, Israel, well, whoever. Well, that, that I, I did a little bit of research on it. I'm I'm one of those people that never got on the bandwagon of Facebook. I'm, I'm not much for Twitter or anything else, and, and mostly because um, I guess I'm, I'm lazy technologically. You know, all I want to do is, is throw uh, – I just want to – massage words. I want to write words and massage words and I want to crunch numbers and I want to read things. I don't really, uh, you know, other than in my blogs, I don't want to try to influence people. I don't want to, I don't want to inform them about, you know, whether I had a good bowel movement during the day or, you know, what I had or the restaurant I went to. I don't want to do lip sync videos. Uh, you know, if I want to do a video, it'll be a training video to try to add some value. So, so none of the things that people are, are spending their time on have any interest to me. So, but TikTok apparently is, you know, where you, you throw around, uh, uh, you create, um, you know, videos about what you're doing. You do lip syncing, you do singing and dancing and all the rest of that. And apparently it's really taken off. And, and uh, I don't hear people in the, coffee shop talking about it as much as they talk about um, other apps, which are basically photo sharing apps. But uh, who knows, maybe that'll be the next thing. That's always how, how I judge what how popular something is when I hear young people who should be studying talking about uh, FaceTime or something like that, or not FaceTime, talking about Facebook or something like that. But I, I do know it's 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 huge outside the country and it's growing in popularity here and and I think that maybe you know and, and I agree with Richard China's economy has boomed there's you're not 
don't have most of the population standing in mud up to their ankles from five o'clock in the morning until the sun goes down to, to grow rice to try to, you know, feed their family. Now you've got, you know, an awful lot of rich people and a lot of middle class and all the rest of that. But um, I think the connection is a little more obvious and maybe insidious between uh, these technology companies in in uh, China and the the Chinese government. Uh, maybe that's be just because our government is more inefficient than theirs and hasn't figured out a way to to capture all the information. But then again, we have the NSA that just flat out goes and steals the information from people. And yeah, well, we just buy it. We just buy it here. The NSA and the yeah. CIA. But actually, there are 17 separate intelligence agencies that we find: NSA, CIA. Uh, you know, uh, military intelligence. I know that's an oxymoron. You know, that goes on and on and on. Uh, yeah, I think I think removing the word intelligence from these agencies would be a good start. You know, just call them information gathering because there, there's uh, uh, naval intelligence. There's there's a whole uh, radiological intelligence agency, which is only its only job is to look at uh, information about nuclear power plants and nuclear weapons and all the rest of that. And we've got, we've got, I think you said 17 is probably more than that. There's some we don't know about. And then, um, yeah, I just, there's, you know, years and years ago, you could overwhelm the system by, um, you know, just putting so much information out there that nobody could possibly keep track of it. But now with these great code writers and algorithms, unfortunately, the more information you put out, the more they know about you. And, and you know, anytime you, you visit a website, you know, that in, goes into somebody's file somewhere. Anytime you look at a certain picture, you know, unless the meta or post a picture, unless all the metadata is scrubbed off, people know where you took it and what time and the, and and they can locate you. I mean, this technology that we're finding so useful is really, uh, given our, our public masters, they're not servants, a key into every single thing we do in our life. And uh, I don't really know what to do about it other than just... I'm not a, I'm not a tech guy, but I understand that, uh, that there is a method of uh, tech uh, internet communications based on on the uh, on the blockchain a blockchain method that would essentially eliminate the ability to uh, go in and uh, and uh, browse other people's emails and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, George Gilder has been uh, writing about it uh, recently, so well, uh, it, it, it'll be interesting. I think I think the uh, technology that we have today, the, the the beauty of living in the 21st century is the technology is growing a heck of a lot faster than the government controllers. Uh, ability to keep up with it. So that's that's my uh, source of optimism. Uh, yeah, I just think the danger with something like TikTok isn't really the average user. The average user doesn't care. No one cares. It's that you get some child of some high ex tech executive and they steal intellectual property because that's what China does. Wow, we're getting some weird feedback issues on here today. And so we got Last night, 4th of July, I don't know where you guys live. It was completely epic around here. It was the world's greatest uh, 4th of July show I, I've ever seen or heard in my 50 years of, of life. Um, Reason had a story the, uh, the other day about are Americans done taking orders? Are we just kind of finished about listening to these politicians and the political class, you know, telling us to one day wear masks, don't wear masks, stay home, but go protest? Are we all just kind of done with all this various... Well, you live in South Sacramento, so you're 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 blessed. I live in the People's Republic of Davis. I went to bed at eight thirty or nine and uh, heard no fireworks whatsoever. So I, you I'm know, sorry, I'll Richard. have to listen to your experience. Well, that's you know, part of that is because you're a little bit deaf, but there was no fireworks, <laughs> Richard. Come on, come on. <laughs> no, my neighborhood. We had. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure they'll be able to figure out where it lived from this, but uh, had some of our our neighbors had great fire. Uh, fireworks displays and what was really cool is that um, these people were as safety conscious as, as I've ever seen anybody with fireworks there were kids out you know the kids were limited in what they could use sparklers I guess if you look on the list of uh, of things that that uh, you know caused the most uh, emergency room visits sparklers is number one over firecrackers and then it goes down the list um, you can find this list on one of these websites we were talking about. They had uh, their fire buckets handy. They had their hoses out. They had their chairs up. They had some stuff to try to keep 
people from driving too quick. Uh, some of our other neighbors had uh, actual, you know, rockets that flew up in the air and exploded just like a normal Fourth of July uh, fireworks. And we live, I live right by the American River, which is a tinderbox. There was no fires along the river anywhere in our neighborhood. People were were having a lot of fun. You know, neighbors were saying hi to each other, and and it was it was glorious. Now I would have. It would have been really nice if I'd have known that Folsom was uh, doing a fireworks display that I could have driven to and watched from my comfort of my car, but I didn't until after the fact. And I thought it was great. And there were there weren't there weren't. I'm sure there are people whining about it. Um, saw it on on this next door thing. Uh, you know, people whining about you know dogs reacting poorly and cats reacting poorly and you know what the heck it's the fourth of july that's when you drug your dogs and cats if they're sensitive to it that's the american way i mean i thought it was great and uh you know it i do remember very few masks but then these people were staying in their family units and we've been told that that's safe to do you know when they interacted they were keeping social distance so i think it could be right that we're we're flat out done with uh Big brother telling us what to do, and uh, we're gonna use common sense and go about our daily business. So, could be a libertarian candidate being elected the next president. You never know. It was it was strange. I mean, we're just kind of figuring out where the hell did all this come from? Because it was like it started like six o'clock, and it didn't end until like three in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, where the heck? My neighborhood had enough explosives in it to blow a hole in the size of like a half a half a city block, apparently. Mm-hmm. Cause this stuff was non-stop going off, you know, the rockets, not, not the legal fireworks. There was plenty of the legal ones, but the illegal fireworks were going off non-stop for like five, six hours. And cool. you know, we've been, we've been hearing it for a couple of weeks, you know, kind of yeah. low grade yeah. stuff, you're, but you're, it was like, I actually posted on last night. It sounds like a revolutionary war battlefield out here. It's just, it literally did. It was like, there's people, you know, you're going, oh, okay, this is kind of fun. I think we only had, there was two fires, small fires, bush fire and something. I'm going, I wish they would make it legal in parks and parking lots where people who want to do the big, the, you know, the big rockets could come in and do it in a safe manner. Well, we could sit there and we could do it in a safe manner. Well, I think we, they did it in a safe manner because you only had two little fires and I had no fires in my neighborhood. And I only heard one uh, one fire engine during the, the whole thing that was going on from about six o'clock till probably midnight. And at least within hearing range of me. So. I think uh, common sense, watch out government, common sense might be rearing its ugly head. You're in well, trouble I guess it does. Your normal Saturday night bar crawl has more injuries than we have during this 4th of the July event, I think. You know, maybe that's... I'm <laughs> suggesting to my, I'm pitching my neighbors today on celebrating Guy Fawkes Day. Because, uh, you know, it's even, <laughs> it's even better because... Because it's in November. You, want, you don't want to mess with little with uh, lady fingers, huh? Well, no, I'm 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 I I'd love to find some, but I'm not allowed to talk about trying to procure illegal things on this show. I don't think. Uh, but it's just the idea that we kind of missed uh, the the we we didn't, but we did miss uh, the Fourth of July, and and why not celebrate it in November? You know, when the fire danger is much less, and maybe by then we can you know. Be, be closer socially because this pandemic will be over. We have to figure out the Battle of Yorktown, right? Celebrate that as Independence Day. I I, I don't really care. Just get your blow some <laughs> stuff up and let me watch. And it is time for us time. to go. You guys, thank you for, for showing up today. You guys, thank you for watching. Please join us at libertariancounterpoint.com and find us on all the various social media outlets. Uh, thank you for watching. And please remember from the Libertarian Counterpoint team to love everybody. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good one. This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching The Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for The Libertarian Counterpoint.